So I'm here with Richard Isselin, a professor at the University of Southern California and, well, the father of happiness ec economics. Um, uh, I think you started to work on this topic in, in, in the early 70s. What did you drive to, well, to, to get into it? Well, I was fortunate enough to be at the uh, Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences at Stanford. And uh, at the center, uh, they bring together social scientists from uh, all different disciplines. And uh, in the course of, uh, I guess, a luncheon one day, uh, somebody mentioned there existed these data on happiness. <laughs> and I thought, well, it would be really interesting to see how happiness uh, related to income and whether economic growth uh, uh, raised people's happiness. And that's how I got started on it. So it was just a coincidence at a, at a lunch meeting? Yes, it, it, was, it was just this fortuitous discovery. And uh, so what I tried to do uh, at, that, at that time, we didn't have the general social uh, survey for the U.S. So what we had were a number of sort of uh, uh, scattered surveys, and I tried to uh, assemble them, uh, try to establish which ones were comparable, to see what sort of picture I could get about uh, happiness uh, in the United States and also uh, in other countries. So in those days, did you expect it would become as big as it, as it became afterwards? Well, I thought it was sort of big, <laughs> but... Uh, the, the economics profession uh, 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 at that time, and even to some extent today, was uh, constrained by this disciplinary paradigm uh, that we don't pay any attention to what people say. We only uh, observe what they do. Uh, and so uh, uh, economists tend to resist any uh, statements that people make about why they do things or how well they feel about themselves. Uh, so, uh, understandably, uh, uh, they didn't uh, at the time pay much attention uh, to what was going on, to what I was saying. 